God can do more with his right hand tied behind his back than, than, than we can with, with both of our hands. The greatest example would have to be the resurrection. Jesus died. He let, amen, they, they let, he let them kill him. He's in the grave three days. Sounds like a defeat. But God, through his crucifixion, uh, we see a resurrection. And even though the devil may have thought he defeated him, it turned out to be victory as he snatched the keys to death, hell, and the grave and rose victorious on the third day. How about that for a left-handed miracle? Amen. <laughs> So the right hand of God, the left hand of God, and we can seek, we can pray for the hands of God. So our hands as well, talk, the scriptures say we ought to lay hands on the sick. The Bible says we impart spiritual gifts by laying hands on them, and, and an impartation happens as they receive spiritual gifts. The scripture says who, who shall come into the presence of the Lord? He that hath clean hands. I think one of the reasons we raise hands, it's for inspection. Yes. Amen. How many times have you asked that two-year-old, are your hands clean? And they say, oh yeah, did you wash your hands? Yes, mom. Let me smell them. <laughs> Do I smell so soap on these hands? I'm, I'm wondering if God's like, okay, you're raising your hands. Did you really, you re they really are clean? Did I smell any anointing soap on there? So hands represent what we do, how we worship, the praise, the, the works. Amen. You know, we, we, we have a strong emphasis on grace. The church has, the church world gets, keeps falling into this thing of going to heaven by works, don't they? And people get it in their head. I'm good enough to go to heaven. And, and here's, here's how the mind works. As long as I can find somebody worse than me, then I figure I'm okay. One of the things that really, can I give a personal testimony here? One of the things that turned me off about church world and the thing that finally got me saved was this thing about being good enough to go to heaven because, and maybe you've heard me say this before, because we all know there are certain people, let's say, let's say Mother Teresa, let's let her in. How many would agree she's a pretty good person? We'll let Mother Teresa in. And how many of us would agree that Adolf Hitler probably should not go in? When you kill, you know, 50 million people, I don't think you're going to make it. Him and his buddies Stalin and Genghis Khan and some of these guys. I mean, uh, Edie, I mean, um, recently. I mean, so so we, we can understand certain people are not going and maybe certain people. But how many know there are shades of difference between them? How many, how, most of us are in between there. I don't see any Mother Teresa's here. And thank God I don't see any Adolf Hitler's. Lord. So we're all in between, and, and so you got all these shades of difference. And what if, what if Jesus was saying, all right, you're in, you're in. Uh, what if he lined them up from, be from best to worst? Because that's what you would do if it was by salvation by works. So, all right, you're in, you're in, you're in, you're right in the middle. And you're like, I hope I make it. You're in, you're in, you're in, you're in. And you're, 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 you're making your argument in case you don't make it. Yeah, but, yeah, but. Uh, I shook the preacher's hand and I, I paid my tithes one week and I. Uh, what, what if it got down to right where you are and Jesus said, you know, I got to draw the line somewhere. And what if he drew the line right at you? Yeah, well. All these are going in, and Jesus said, I got to draw the line somewhere. And you say, what's the difference between me and him? 
well, this guy, actually, according to the books, he gave five more dollars in the offering in his life. And I had to draw the line somewhere, so they're going in and you're not. Would that be fair? Going to heaven is not about doing good things. It's not about good work. Not about being a good person. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mother Teresa needed Jesus. And Adolf Hitler could have gone to heaven. Boy, that's hard to get a hold of. If he had repented of his sins and truly changed. We go to heaven because we're forgiven, not because we're all that. Amen. Come on, give Jesus a hand. Amen. Wow. Come on, get that in your spirit. But here's the thing. We, we, the next thing we start doing is we just start throwing works out the window because it's not about works. Hmm. It doesn't matter about works. Works can't get me to heaven, so I might as well, I'm just going to come to church on Sunday and sit in the pew because works don't matter. Works don't mean anything. Oh, now works will not earn you anything, but works are a sign of something. Oh, someone help me in this place. The classic scripture on grace and works is Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, and we never read verse 10. So, for by grace, say by grace, you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Salvation is a gift, a free, unmerited, undeserved gift. Not of works, say not of works, lest anyone should boast. But then there's verse 10. For we are his workmanship, we're the result of his hands. He did works, created in Christ Jesus for, say for, that means purpose, your purpose, he didn't make you to go to heaven. He made you for good works. Oh, my, 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 my. I, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't earn you anything, but we do it. We do it because we love him. We do it because he enabled us to do it. We do it because God did it for us. Amen. We love him back. We, we out of gratitude. I, I, how about this? We do it because now we are in, the, we are made in the image of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. How about this? He wants to marry someone who acts like him. God, Jesus doesn't want to be unequally yoked. So if he does works, he said, I do the works of my father. If he did works, or do we not do works? Wow. He said, God prepared them in you beforehand that we should Walk in these works. To tell you the truth, I could say amen and, and send you home right now. So, but I won't. <clears throat> so, number one, we were created. Say, I was created to do good works. Once God saves you, that releases you to be the person he always meant you to be. A loving, caring, sharing, helping uh-huh. A person who does something to change the world around him. How about, how about Titus chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse 4? Titus, oh, Titus is full of this stuff. After you get through all the, the, the stuff about qualifications for ministry, then he gets into this. He said, for when the kindness, say the kindness, and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the, of the Holy Spirit. Say amen. amen. 
Next verse says, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Oh, we're all shouting over that. That's good stuff, right? This is a faithful saying. Next verse. And these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Saved by grace, not of works. Hallelujah. Now go to work. Do you feel me? Verse 14, same chapter. And let our people also learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs that they may not be unfruitful. Amen. There it is. There it is. Good works are Proof that you are not just saved, but you are a fruitful person. Wow. Good works are, are the fruit, fruit that we bear. How about John the Baptist's message? Remember when the Pharisees said, well, you know, I'm, I'm good with you. <laughs> and John said, bring forth works fruit meat for repentance yeah. don't tell me you've repented and then you act then you act like that if you've repented that that doesn't mean you just changed your mind that means you changed your direction yeah. you're walking in a different direction now you're you're living a different kind of lifestyle you're doing works now and john wouldn't even baptize them <laughs> call them vipers <laughs> I don't think I've ever called anyone a snake in public. No, don't say come on. I need to stop right there. Don't, don't encourage me. <laughs> that, that's not, you know, today it's all about seeker sensitive, right? And the attractional church, we need to be more attractional. And, of course, I don't want to be unattractive, but, <laughs> and I, I don't want to be insensitive. But at the same time, it's not all about, you know, that John said, you generation of vipers. You know, Jesus kind of messed with them too. And those were the church people. He never treated a harlot like that. He never treated a tax collector like that. Woo! Come on, saints. Come on, saints. You know, uh, how many are familiar with the seven churches in Revelation? John writes to the seven churches. Every single one of them, in every single one of those seven churches, Jesus says, I know your works. I know your works, Ephesus. I know your works, Pergamum. I know your works, Laodicea. I know your works. There's got to be a book somewhere with your works in them. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Again, it's not about reward. It's, well, let me say it then. It's not, it's not about gaining access. And here, here's a revelation. He's not going to love you more. Because he can't love you anymore. Amen. He loved you when you were a dirty dog. Yes. Come on. Amen. Oh, don't look at me in that self-righteous tone. You were all, I don't care if you were, if you, some of you were born saved. I know, but the rest of us were dirty dogs at one point, and God saved us. Come on. <laughs> Jesus, help us. So it's not about... It's not about earning anything, like I said, but good works. Whew. It's like saying, Jesus, you loved me so much. You have changed my life. Now all I want to do is love people. All I want to do is help people. All I want to do is be a witness. All I want to do is reach out. I shouldn't have to get up here and crack a whip and say, you do this and you go do that and you do this. I hope you never do anything for me. I hope you always do it for Jesus. I'll disappoint you. I, I won't thank you enough, you know. Uh, you may not get recognized, whatever. But, but listen, listen. <clears throat> Doing it for me. 
Maybe that's why you quit so early. You know, this. <laughs> do it for him. Yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. If you do it for him, you're doing it for me because I won't have to hear it. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Say amen. amen. Wow, 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 wow. Matthew 5, verse 16. Watch this. These are the ways, these are red letter. These, they're not red, but they're red. You understand? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Listen, I, it doesn't earn you anything, but I want to tell you something. Your good works glorify God. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, come on. We say, God, I give you glory. And the Lord's saying, yeah, I'm waiting. Because it's good works that give glory to God. When the world sees you do good works, it gives him glory, amen. They can't figure it out. They don't know why you do it. They don't know why you come to church so much. They don't know why you give 10% of your income. They don't know why you spend every free moment you can doing something great for someone else. They don't understand you running to the hospital or going to a funeral. But I'm here to tell you, they show the glory of God. The glory of God's not just a miracle. The glory of God is getting some of you to move and do something great for God. Yeah. Come on and give him a praise. Amen. Yeah. They demonstrate the glory of God. Amen. Wow. Whew. Y'all are praying because I really am almost done. First Peter. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners, as members of Journey Life Center, and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust that which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, right? That when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, watch this, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Yes. You know what that scripture saying? They're going to lie on you. They're going to oppose you. They're going to come against you. They may not like you, but it's not your doctrine that's going to get them. It's you doing good works. That's what the world needs to start seeing. We need to stop being angry at the world. We need to stop fussing at them. We need to stop judging them and condemning them. I hate these people. These people don't know. Listen, you need to get your attitude right. Amen. You need to change your attitude. We're not here to judge them at all. We're here to love on the world. We're here to show them the goodness of God. Amen. We are the hands of God. Love the world. It's the goodness of God that will lead them to repentance. Amen. I'm not suggesting we don't preach the truth. I understand. You know I can, you know I can hire as well as anybody. Ha. Y'all you, know what I'm saying, right? Oh, I'll start preaching that way. I'll wake you up. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. It's not about judging the world. It's about, it's about loving the world. I don't know where they learn that. Some seminary teaches that somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> it's not about that. Huh. I almost said I got my hackers out there. I don't know if I want to say that. And he said when they come against you, you know what they're going to do? They're going to glorify God, if not now, on the day of visitation. When God pulls us all together and judges the world, he's gonna, God's going to, God's going to, you know, my greatest day is when I get to present all of you to the Lord. I don't know how all that all works. I don't know about people that left. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I present them or not. I don't, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> but somehow or another, I, Paul said, I'm going to present you to the Lord. So one of these days, I'm going to present all of you to the Lord. Will you start helping me so I look good? Will you help me? <laughs> I need to look better. Amen. No, I'm, I'm going to present you to the Lord, and I'll, I'll, I'll be as proud. And after that, I ain't your pastor no more. There's no pastors in heaven. Ha! There's musicians. Where's Don? 
Don, Don has to, oh, yeah. <laughs> Don, you are, but you are working forever, for all eternity. I'm taking a sabbatical all eternity. No pastors needed and nobody to save. Eh? Nobody to save. Amen? Amen? Powerful. Good works. God's going to, if they don't see it now, they're going to see it then. And God's going to say, look, these people loved you. Your family members, they're in heaven now. They loved you. They showed good works towards you. They invited you to church <laughs> on Easter Sunday. <laughs> they, 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 they were patient with you. They put up with you. Come on. The, the Greek word for patience, literally long-suffering. You know what that word means? It's a deep, deep Greek word. Deep, it means to suffer long. <clears throat> it means to put up with. Sometimes, the, sometimes I call it the ministry of putting up with. And sometimes you just have to do that. That's good works. Are you following what I'm saying? One last scripture, and we'll close. Musicians, come on. Hebrews 13 and verse 20 and verse 21. Now, may the God of peace, this is the conclusion to Hebrews. Now, may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Isn't the resurrection the message all the time? Come Easter, I'm going to show you. That great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, wow, make you complete in every good work. Did you know there's a maturity to this? Did you know that there's a maturity in walking in good works? And we need to ask ourselves, am I there? Have I reached a maturity in good works? Working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Stand with me. Our prayer is that God would complete works in you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. I feel led to do this. We, one night during the revival, we did it. 